In this lesson, we are going to go over square roots, properties of square roots, and the principal square root, in addition to talking about radical expressions in general. The goal here is to get a little bit of vocabulary about square roots and radical expressions so that when we do our operations, we'll all be on the same page when it comes to determining. So first is square roots. C, any number C, is a square root of A if C squared equals A. So if C times C is A, then C is called the square root of A. Not a lot uh, of new information there. For instance, the number 4 is a square root of the number 16 because 4 squared is 16. But we also have to keep in mind that not only is 4 times 4 16, but another number times itself, negative 4, is also 16. So negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. So 16 has two square roots. The square roots of 16 will be, I want the plus and the negative, the positive and the negative square roots. They will be negative 4 and 4. Both of those numbers, when multiplied by themselves, will generate 16. Properties of square roots. <clears throat> Every positive number has a square root. Meaning, only positive numbers from 1, well, let's actually do the square root numbers for 1, 4, let's see, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Those are perfect square numbers, meaning that their square roots are positive. The principal square roots is the non-negative root of a number. In between the numbers 1 through 4, there is the numbers 2 and 3, and here there is 5, 6, 7, 8, and between there is 10, 11, and so on. Now, those numbers also have square roots, but they're not perfect square roots because those aren't perfect square numbers. To illustrate, the number 4 can be drawn as a perfect square. 4 pips arranged in a square is a perfect square. Each side of the square is 2 in length, meaning that this number 4 is 2 squared. Uh, the number 9 can be drawn as three pips in a row of three and a column of three. And again, this is a three by three square, so the number nine is three squared. The number seven, however, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's no way that I can arrange seven pips into a square. That's because 7 is not a perfect square number. It does have a square root, which is going to be a little more than 2, but not quite 3. Um, however, it will not be perfectly square. <clears throat> All non-negative numbers have a square root. That's the pop property of square roots. However, the principal square roots are going to be only the non-negative roots. Meaning, of the number 25, 25 is, is 5 squared, and it's also negative 5 squared. Both of these numbers mean 25. But only 5 is the principal square root of 25, because it is the non-negative square root of 25. <clears throat> the symbol for square root is called a radical. A radical is actually any root. Square root would mean that it has an index of 2. So I'm going to put k here for the index. Now a square root, when k is 2, we don't normally put the number there. But I can have other kinds of roots. I can have an index of 3, looking for the third root of a number. I can have an index of Four, looking for the fourth root of a number. Square roots, unlike these other roots, don't require the index number because the minimum root you can have is a square. So 
A radical expression is made up of several parts. The expression is made up of the root symbol, the radicand, and let's give a number out here just for fun. This radical expression says 47 times the square root of the quantity x plus 7. This part is called the radical. This part is called the, it's a scalar, but we also call it the coefficient. And this part here underneath, everything underneath the radical is called the radicand. And were we to have a number here, we would call that the index. So this is some of the terminology having to do with square root and square root expressions. Let's take a look at a radical function. Let's try doing the function f of x is equal to the square root of x. And so um, we'll put replacement values for x and then, uh, and then we'll graph that and see what, what a radical function looks like. So let's start with the f of 0. So what is the square root of 0? So if I put a 0 in for x, what is the square root of 0? The square root of 0 is 0. So I know I have a point here right at the origin. So my function uh, of f of x is equal to radical x will include the point 0, 0. So let's try some other replacement values. 2, 4. Okay, so let's look for then the f of 1, right? So the square root of 1, and this, if this equals 0, then the square root of 1 is 1. So then I know I have a point at 1, 1, so I'll put another point there. Let's try the f of 2. The f of 2 is the square root of 2. Basically, I'm, I'm replacing whatever my f of is with my x. And I know, let's see, well, the square root of 4, f of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, exactly. So this is going to be less than 2. It's, it's, actually, it's a little more uh, than 1. It's like 1.4 something something. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and approximate this at 2. We'll approximate that to be somewhere not quite in the middle. Um, then we skipped 3. And we went right to 4, but that one we knew for sure was right on the money there because the square root of 4 is 2. So this is about 1.4 or so. This is 2. Let's see, we need to do the f of 8. The square root of 8. Well, I don't really know what that is, but I know that the f of 9, or the square root of 9, that's a nice perfect square. So it's going to be 3. So if I go and see that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3. I know that that's there. And, and basically, what I'm describing is not a line, well that's yellow, it's going to be hard to see. Not a line, let's do it in orange, but a curve that kind of, and again I don't have the best drawing ability, but the curve kind of curves up a little bit slow and then is just going to increase um, as, it, as we move along the x-axis. So the function of a radical expression looks like looks like this curve here. Notice that we can't really do a negative x input value because then we would have the f of negative 1 which would be the square root of negative 1 and this is not a real number. We've already stated and we'll, we'll learn how to deal with this in a little bit but as you can see the important thing to understand is that I can't take the, the f of a negative number if my function is the square root of x because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So my function is not going to come down here. It's not going to mirror off the way that it might look like a parabola. So this is a graph of a radical function. We can change that function around if we did something like uh, g of x say is equal to the square root of 3x minus 2, um, then our graph would look a little bit different, but it would not want to go 
down below into the negative areas it will graph something like um, it's going to shift it this way by about two thirds let's keep that a different color shift it this way by about two thirds and basically be uh, basically be the same graph so the function of the radical expression looks like a sideways curve. In fact, it looks about, well, we'll get into this function here being the inverse of a different kind of function. If f of x were, say, x squared, the inverse of that function would be and we're going to get into how these two are related in a very short time.